I'll do in the interest of time is um, keep my talk as brief as possible. 15 minutes, is that, is that okay? 20 minutes? What, what is your... What? Well, uh, I think... 20 15, 20, 20 minutes, okay. okay, 20 minutes, okay. Okay, Let, let's do this. We can do it in 20 minutes to give ourselves plenty of time for, uh, for discussion. So I want to talk about business models, and I think I want to talk about the problem, uh, the causes of the problem, and some potential models. Um, I've spent uh, the last uh, uh, 23 years actually studying the biotechnology industry. Um, I uh, first uh, walked into a biotechnology firm uh, in uh, 1984 or so, uh, so I guess that's more than 23 years, um, and I followed the industry uh, quite quite carefully in my career, and I don't I think we don't have a good business model. We haven't yet found the right business model, and I think this slide um, and this data says it all. So this is American companies, American biotechnology companies. Um, all publicly traded companies. So if we think about publicly traded companies, we know that, in fact, um, we have a biased sample of ones who are doing better. We know privately held companies almost all lose money. Um, and, and so these are just American biotechnology companies. Um, the, the dark blue line on top is the revenue of the whole sector. So imagine all the firms, as we just rolled them up into one one firm and took an aggregate income statement. Uh, the, blue, the yellow line is the industry without Amgen. Is it? Amgen, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, and, and the pink line, which you can barely see, uh, is the uh, profitability of the industry. Now, you can't see it because it hugs the x-axis. Um, uh, and then if you take Amgen out of the picture, uh, you've got that dark blue line or that light blue line that's negative. So basically, the sector has been uh, losing money since 1990 and on a cumulative cash flow basis um, has lost uh, billions of dollars uh, over time. And in fact, in the U.S., there's only one industry that's lost more money than biotechnology over the same time period, uh, and that's airlines. <laughs> now, in the last, that might change because banks lost a lot of money, too, in the last year and a half. So maybe that's uh, we've, we've corrected that. But, so, so that says something from an economic point of view, the industry hasn't been working right. This is a data on productivity that I put together because we often hear that biotechnology companies are more productive at R&D than uh, big pharma companies. So I, did a, I won't go into all the details here, but I, but I did a, a very detailed analysis looking at the costs of developing a new drug for each year, and this is based on a rolling cumulative total and I would just worry about the data at the far end of the extreme, 2004, because that represents the most data. That's 20 years of, of data. And the dark uh, blue line are biotech firms. The pink line are pharma companies. And we can see it's, it's basically a, uh, no difference, statistical dead heat. That the cost of developing a drug from start to finish, after you control for partnerships, after you control for attrition, after you control for all sorts of things, is about the same between a biotechnology company and a big pharmaceutical company. So that says the sector um, has probably not lived up to its expectations, um, at least in the US. And we have lots of causes why we often hear it's time, it just takes a long time, the, the industry will do better someday. Now I've been to a, a, at least one industry conference every year um, in my career, so last you know, more than 20 years, at least one industry conference in biotechnology. And every year, I've heard the same story, that next year, the industry's lost money to date, and we've struggled to date, but, but just wait, because next, next year, it's, we're going to pick up. And we have an expression, we call this a hockey stick diagram. If you're a, friend, a fan of hockey, you know the shape of the stick. It goes like this, and then it takes off. Um, I, I call this the Annie hypothesis. If anybody is a fan of musicals, you know the, the musical Annie, and she sings, the sun will come out tomorrow. And that's what we've been hearing. Now, we've been hearing that for 20, more than 20 years, that the sun will come out tomorrow, uh, and I, I used to believe that. Um, I got skeptical about 10 years ago, after I heard it 10 times, um, and I heard it again this year at a biotechnology industry conference in Boston just three weeks ago. Um, and so I don't believe it. I don't think it's just a matter of time. I don't think it's the FDA's fault. I think the FDA does a reasonably good job 
um, with, uh, uh, with, it, with its very difficult task. I don't believe the lack of, of profitability has anything to do with pricing in the U.S. Biotechnology firms have been able to get pretty much a free pass on pricing. I do think it's the last issue, which are business models, and that's what we're here to talk about. So I want to talk about why I think the industries have the wrong business models and um, uh, why, uh, what I think could be done about it. I'm going to skip over this very quickly. It's just clear that the industry has not found a sustainable business model. Through the history of the biotech industry, we've jumped from one business model to another. We started with the idea of fully integrated pharmaceutical companies, then alliance-driven companies, then platform companies, then product companies. I think the problem is as follows. Um, there are three assumptions behind most biotech business models, and I think they're just the wrong assumptions. So there are three assumptions. The first assumption is that the new science dramatically reduces the time and uncertainty of R&D. I read a lot of business models. Um, I do some work for some venture capital firms as an advisor. I get a chance to look at business models. And all of them sort of start the same way, or many of them start the same way. That historically, it's taken 12 years to put a drug on the market because the technology is out of date and big pharmaceutical companies are slow, but we, we have a new technology, we have a new approach, and we can do it in half the time and half the cost. Um, that's proven not to be true, okay? Um, the science is still very difficult, and, and um, if uh, uh, one builds a business model based on the idea that this is short and low risk, you've immediately got the wrong business model. The second assumption is that drug R&D is modular, that is, in fact, there's lots of pieces, and you can do each one separately and focus on one little piece. Um, and I think that's a mistake, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the third is that the new science that comes along, that everything comes before it is obsolete, so that the new basically drives out the old. Okay? If you believe those assumptions, you believe that you know, short-term financing, uh, that you need just short-term financing and you can monetize the IP, that you can have specialized islands of expertise, companies that focus on each particular module, and that novelty is valued more highly than experience. So new firms should always do better than old firms. Um, but that's